James, if you stay there, I'm going to come and point around, then you can talk my finger and I'll point out. You've got a bit of sound on you there. You can see the web a lot better now. But what's about two or three different layers there? She was just saying that she just caught a little insect there. A tiny one, it's in, his, in her mouth. I can't even see it through the camera. The web is really, really pretty from this side. And you also get an indication of the size of that web if you look at Peter there. Okay, yeah, what Peter's saying there, sorry about the sound problem, what he's saying is just behind the big web there's another little small web that he's pointing out now. So you can see the, like the golden web of the golden horn spider in the background, a beautiful golden color, and then there's a like, kind of a whitish web and just in the foreground now. Where's the spider? A tiny little spider there. Peter, they're quite happily coexisting there in that web. Yeah, what happens is um, they actually have different spider species. There's another kind of spider as well. If you look at this one, yeah. Peter pointing at another kind of species. The different mm. species that will coexist on They eat things that are too small, things that she won't be interested in. They um, they'll pick those up and they also they know where the strands are sticky and where they're not. And um, so they can walk around on their web without being Peter just saying there that the little one, the little spiders eat animals or little bugs that are too small for the for the big orb spider to eat. They pick out, and then um, if you look carefully on Peter, if you let let a you know, little bit of light through, Peter was talking the other day about how they make their webs with little balls of stickiness, and you can actually see those little balls of stickiness on the back on the golden on the golden web. It's got like little bubbles. So those are the sticky parts and the spiders know that the sticky parts are like obviously sticky. So they actually put their feet in between the sticky parts and that's how they can, they can move around in the web nice and easily. So these little spiders also know about those sticky uh, big blobs of the big spiders and they stay away from them. Yeah, Peter, yeah you can see the little droplets very well. Come have a look on the screen. Are just so That's pretty. amazing. I'll be honest with you, I was looking at it up close now and it's the first time I even noticed those yeah. little globules that yeah. James is talking about. Now you can just make it out, huh? Look very carefully. You can see the, the small droplets on it. 
It was quite a good yeah, the, 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 on the left hand side strain of the of the golden yeah. of the golden spider web you can see them quite good. Now the reason I'd never noticed it before maybe is because I'd never i never knew exactly how they made this and I read the other day I was checking up on it a little bit. It's how they make these webs out of spiral strands. I'll try and explain it to you more just now. James, we'll find another web later on in the afternoon that we can stop really close to and we we'll try and get super close up. Beautiful web, huh? Yeah. How they make those little globules is I'm gonna try and show it to you with this with this grass. As you can imagine if you have let's clean this off a bit more. incredible how these animals coexist. I mean there's different species living there like James was telling you and they've learned over a long period of time that they can live on these webs so they typically will find the same species on lots of orb web spiders. So imagine they're making these separate individual strands of, of web and they make that in the spinnerets at the back of the abdomen. Let's get this one clean as well. And they get a few different strands like that so as they spin them actually use a few more than this but I'm just going to use the three because that's the only three that came out well. They create a sort of a spiral you know if you twist these around like a bit of a like if you weave a rope. So they create that kind of spiral if like a woven rope. Then what she does is that's got glue on it already in between those spirals of webbing she then takes and she pulls it. She literally jerks it a little bit like that to create the, again I hope, you, I hope this makes sense to you because that's how I understand it and it really is the way it's done but I'm just trying to find a way of actually visually explaining it. She jerks on that woven piece of, of webbing so as those woven pieces pull tight it obviously pushes out little globules and it is so perfectly symmetrical. We're going to try and show you on the camera later. I had a very close look now with the naked eye. If you look at it up really close you can see each individual drop and they are perfectly distanced from the next one all the way along that web. So it is so perfectly woven, so symmetrical, James, you'd probably appreciate the engineering behind it, that, um, that when they pull that strand tight, it makes perfectly measured out little droplets. So when she's walking along, she knows that if I move my foot so far, any of my eight feet, and I put it down there, I'm going to put it down in a dry piece of the strand. Yet if an insect flies into it, it gets stuck in those little globules. It's uh, phenomenal. It's quite mind-blowing. <laughs> I suppose it's like if you're wringing a towel or something that's wet. Exactly. Twist it like that, then the water comes out. But they're just twisting it, and then it's just a little droplets for. That's also a very good explanation of it. But we're going to try and show you again another web, maybe.